What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Hoops Crew. My name is Ben Reeve, and today I am joined by JB from the Brisbane Lions Fancast. Welcome. Thanks for having me, mate. It's uh, it's good to be back. Game on the weekend: Cats mm-hmm. versus Brisbane in the prelim. Yeah, it's uh, what three and five years now. So the last two um, have been whitewashes. I'm hoping for a little bit of a better performance in 2024. We're not going to talk about 2004, uh, but that was the last time that Brisbane got a win over Geelong in Victoria. It was in a prelim as well. So we do have a bit of a history in the prelims there. Uh, it was a very young cat side that year on the cusp of something special. Uh, Gary Ablett Juniors and a bunch of those Bartels and all those guys running around, that, <laughs> the little fellas back in the day. Uh, Riccardi and all that nearly kicked the goal to put the cats uh, within uh, within kicking distance but uh wasn't to be but um here we are again now it's a quick fire show quick shout out to our sponsor cyril cook florist uh, get around them check out their shop down in breakwater uh, mention the name of the hoops crew and i'll give you a lovely uh 20 discount all right now first question for you mate who is your most loved or admired player at the geelong football club and i'll answer this question for brisbane as well but you go first who do you like at the Cats? Well, when I was a kid, for some reason, it was Peter Riccardi. And I, I'm basing that on not much other than I think I liked his name and the way he, he played his footy. Uh, I really had a soft spot for Max Rook as well. He was oh, just he. one of the toughest buggers going around. And then it's really hard to go past Gary Ablett Jr. I think he will be... I mean, at, at, at the moment, he's the best player I've seen play footy. And I was lucky enough to see his very last game at the 2020 Grand Final, uh, albeit things didn't go your way. But, um, yeah, love Gary Adler Jr. What about current day players from from the Catters? Is there anyone that really sort of you watch and you go, oh, I reckon I like, I w- wish I had this bloke at the Cats. And clearly everyone will say Jezza because he's a star. But is there any, <laughs> you can say Jezza if you want, but is there any, is there anyone? No. Else? Um, I, I, I remember watching Sean Manor last year when we played Werribee in the, in the prelims in the VFL and thought, God, this guy's good. And then you guys picked him up and as you do, turned him into a bona fide AFL star and had a, an amazing qualifying final. Uh, Blitzarves is, I think would fit on any list in basically any position as well. Um, but the way Max Holmes is coming along is, is pretty tantalizing as well. I think he's got a, a big future in front of him. Let's hope so. Look for me. The player I love to watch, and he's not a superstar. Well, he's not yet anyway, but Hugh McCluggage. I yeah. love him. I absolutely love the guy. Everything he does, it just turns to gold. Um, it's He's great to watch. He's fantastic. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of guys that I'd love to have at the Cats, from your, and there's a bunch of former Cats that I wish we had back. <laughs> Link McCarthy is one that I really didn't want to let go, um, but I, I must admit I am enjoying him. See, seeing him have a good career. Oh yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that he he did his knee this year, but I'm looking forward to he's signed another contract extension. So hopefully he can um come back into the team next year. Although Kyle Loman has filled that spot quite nicely. So it he might find it a little bit tough, but he's very consistent and very mature football that uh we've definitely needed at times this year for sure. Yeah, so I'm expecting Hugh McCluggage to have a big impact on on this game. Um but who's the player at the Cats that rankles you a little bit that you just can't stand they just rub you the wrong way for some reason and i know a lot of opposition supporters just tom hawkins for whatever reason it is maybe that's not your guy but for us at geelong we love tom but for some reason he rubs opposition supporters the wrong way is there a player at geelong that does that to you yeah look the one that does spring to mind is hawk and not because <laughs> of the way he plays or anything i'm just sick of it like for 15 years i've just watched him pile on goals against brisbane so i'm um, I am happy that is going to come to an end, but a genuine legend like to get that career out of a center half forward is unprecedented. So you got to pay the man respects. Um, other than that, not too many. I, 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 the way Grind Myers kicks a football just discombobulates my brain. <laughs> but that's not <laughs> nothing to hate the man for. It's just strange looking, and I'm sort of thinking to myself, you need to go back to Oz Kick and learn how to kick a footy. But it works for him, so. I, I can't say that I really don't like a lot of Ge- Geelong players. I mean, generally speaking, I would hate Geelong if I didn't have so much respect for them and the way they've gone about it the last 20 years. And, you know, you've got an ex-line at the, as a head coach and Nigel Lappin doing his thing there as well. So, you know, I do have a bit of a soft spot for Geelong. But, yeah, there is a couple that, yeah, do irk me a little bit. I think we've all got players at every club that, that do that. But there's a player that I, I, I want, Bontempelli. He's the one that I'd, I'd sell oh. my house for if I could get Bontempelli at the Cats. But 
Unfortunately, they're not in the finals anymore. <laughs> so what can you do? All right. Tell me why the Brisbane Lions win against the Cats on Saturday twilight. Can I assume it was it's Dane Zorko for you? Oh, sorry. I didn't answer that question, did I? Oh, thank you for pulling me up there. Uh, no, it's not Dane really? Zorko. He's a close second. <laughs> uh, a very close second. But it's Lockie Neal for me. Lockie Fair Neal. enough. And it's because he just has given us crap. A couple of times he's played against Geelong and he's all lippy and getting stuck in a Gary Rowan at one point and, uh, and he just gifted a brown low. And I won't go there. I won't go there. But Well, I will um, say I'm glad Mark O'Connor's not playing this week because he normally fouls <laughs> him up. So he might get off the chain a little bit perhaps. Well, we'll see in the moon boot at one stage this week. So yeah. we'll see. But now he is the one that just irks me. Uh, I'm sure he's a good guy, but on a, on a footy field, um, I just can't stand him. Um, I cannot stand him. But like, a bit like Tommy Hawkins, he's a great bloke off the field. And if you ever met him, you'd fall in love with him straight away. But I can see why opposition supporters have had enough of him <laughs> over the years. Um, all right, back to my other question. Why is, why is Brisbane going to win this week? Oh, I, I think our best footy is like it is the best, but I'm sure every team says that. But when we really get it going, like we can pile on goals. I mean, obviously we saw it the last half against GWS, but you know, the first quarter and a bit against Carlton 60 to zip, like everything was just in sync. The pressure was up, the tackling, the defensive structures, and then the attack was all, all working really well. It's just, we haven't been able to put it together for four quarters. So, um, look, six years of finals experience, four prelims in that time, uh, I, I, I have to think that, you know, the finals experience is going to come into it as well uh, on the big moments. Um, but, yeah, I think we're going to have to have a lot of things go right for us if we are to get up. And, you know, we're going to be exhausted from that game against the Giants last week and you've had the, the week off as well. Yeah. Look, I think that'll that'll work in our favour a week off. I think the days of the Geelong date doesn't go well after a bye are long gone. Still get reminded about it every now and then, but uh, I think the cats off off a rest. Uh, everything just seems to be coming together at the right time. It's um, I feel I'm sitting here right now feeling really lucky that this has happened. Uh, I can't believe it, considering uh, last year with all the injuries, but this year it just seems to be everyone's coming back. It's like, how do you, you know, we're asking questions. How do we get Tom Hawkins into this team? Um, how do we get Sam DeConning back? Um, I Sam DeConning. Um, how do we get and Tom Stewart? Um, Tom Stewart's coming back as well, and then you've got Cam Guthrie, two time Kaji Groups medalist, probably won't get a game. Um, so it's we've just absolutely blessed at the moment with the with the injuries. Not to say we don't have any, um, Paddy Dangerfield's hamstrings holding up. Look, I think the Cats, um, you know, they're coming off a big win against Port. I just feel like, um, just to me, without a scientific reason or an ex or a deep analysis here, I just feel like it's destiny for the Cats again. It just feels like every Every couple of years, we're back in a prelim against Brisbane again. We know what happened last time. I won't, I won't rub salt into the wound on that one, but, um, but it just feels like here we go again. Um, and I can't see a situation where Geelong loses. Now, clip this section because <laughs> you can play this one back uh, on Saturday night after we've lost um, by sixty points. But, um, but that's just where I'm sitting at right now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to answer the next question, though, first, and then I'll let you follow. Why does my team lose? Um, pretty much for the for similar reasons as to what you just said. I think the power and the weapons that the Brisbane Lions possess are absolutely scary, and when they're on, they they can dominate a game like, like very few other teams can. I think probably Sydney might be the other one that really scared me earlier in the year when we got out to a great start and we were high five and patting ourselves on the back and all of a sudden they took it away from us and didn't even look like they were trying. Um, and Brisbane can do that as well. I mean, as you said, every team can can bring their best and every team's best you know, on their day will, will probably win if, if their opponent's slightly slightly off. But um, but I think the Cats, um, yeah, I think the Cats, if they come up against the Brisbane side ready to go and, uh, and I think we'll see the signs pretty early on, um, I think, yeah, we might be in a little bit of trouble, uh, especially if we get a bit too creative at the selection table. But what do you think? Why does why does Geelong beat Brisbane? Oh, because Geelong just win finals for fun. That's just what they do. <laughs> um, and especially prelims against Brisbane, it hasn't even been close in the last two that we've played. But and it's, it's it's a very different team. And you know, you listen to King and stuff. They say it's not a premiership list, but you've got Chris Scott that can just get the absolute best out of everyone. You'll get to Conning back. You'll get Stewart back. And I mean, you beat us early in the year, but it's it's hard to really take much away from that game. It was pissing down rain. Uh, we lost Oscar McInerney early, who was 
playing quite well up until that point. Then you lost Stewart and we just didn't adapt to the conditions and we kicked, what, three goals, 14 or something like that. So um, Jeremy Cameron was pretty quiet that day. Ryan Lester did a good enough job on him, I think. So I think he'll get that matchup again. But yeah, I think the rest, I, I keep oscillating because I keep thinking, you know, there's no way this game coming up can be as tough as last week. I mean, look at the, the teams on paper and the matchups and I think, you know, we should be able to adjust things here, here and here and it, it should be easier. But then you've had what one you'll be playing one game in 29 days or something. You'll, you'll be nice and rested. And the way you just dispatched of Port Adelaide was quite scary as well. So uh, I, th- I think we're in with a shot, but uh, Geelong, I mean, Geelong, <laughs> you never write them off. You can't, you had a, the, the miniature of miniature rebuilds last year. And then suddenly you're right back into it and you've plucked people like Lawson Humphreys and Ollie Dempsey's come along and, you just keep doing it, and it's very, very frustrating. And I hope we can, um, you know, six years in finals. Hopefully, we're somewhere on the way to to replicating some sort of consistent success like that. But um, yeah, hopefully, you, hopefully you do. Now, first quarter starts, first five minutes. What are you looking for? What signs? What are the KPIs that are going to tell you that your boys are on today? What 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 is it about your club's DNA that tells you we're going to win this game right off uh, right off the bat straight away? Well, there's been a number of games where we've gone into quarter time, like five or six goals up, and that's not necessarily the litmus test because they, those leads have been run down more often than not for us this year. But it's more the tackles and the pressure that is going to be a, a better sign for us. Like we, Even the games we win, our tackle counts and our, you know, our pressure numbers are, are right down. So if we can get the, the same pressure and intensity we bought in the last half against the Giants last week, that's going to be a, a good sign. Um and the defensive structures as well. If we're if we're leaking out too many goals to you know Myers and Stengel and Manor and and the like, then that's going to be a poor sign. So it, it's going to be the pressure and intensity, and then keeping that up for the whole game as well. It's not so much the scoreboard ticking over because I mean we did that to you in the first ten minutes earlier on in the year as well. We got off to a blistering start, but uh, you mowed that down fairly easily. So it, it, it's more the defensive side that's going to be a the sign for me. Yeah, for me, it's um, it's, it's those one touch possessions. It's uh, if we come out fumbling, if we're coming out looking unsure, um, slow to move the ball, um, I'm going to be a bit nervous. Uh, but if I but if I see the cats are switched on, uh, they're connecting really well, they're linking, they're running together at the waves. Um, I, I think that's going to be on for me. Clearly, I don't want to be five goals down, and that's an obvious one, really. But um, but if we're within a couple of goals at the end of the first quarter, but we're doing all the things that I want to see, you know, like the pressures on. And and the ball use is good. Um, I think we're in, in for a good, especially being at the MCG and having the fresh legs. Um, you know, I don't necessarily think you write this one off if the cats are down by a couple of goals at quarter time or half time. I think if anything, I'd we'll be more concerned as a Brisbane Lions fan at that point. If you're not, if you're not out to a, a big lead early, um, the cats will probably come on pretty hard in the last two two quarters. There, I think um, cats are always a bit vulnerable straight after half time. Uh, or last week they weren't, but. This year, they've been pretty rubbish uh, after a halftime break, but expect the Cats um, to come home pretty hard. Uh, who from the Lions should we watch out for uh, on the weekend? Which which player that maybe Cats don't sort of know too much about that uh, should we keep an eye on uh, or should we be concerned about, I suppose? Uh, I guess the, the bloke I mentioned before, Ryan Lester, is he's been on our list. He's only just played his 200th game and he's been surviving on one-year deals for the last seven years or something like that. Just a... One of those heart and soul players. And as I mentioned before, he towed Jeremy Cameron up earlier in the year. I think just the matchup worked really well. Like he can he can move with him up the ground and he's defensive one-on-ones. He rarely gets beaten. And he's just one of those players that outside of Brisbane fans, no one really knows. The other one is we didn't have Will Ashcroft earlier in the year and he's building very, very nicely. And he was basically the reason we got over the line last week. He's uh, prelim, uh, he's qualifying. His elimination final against Carlton was was just as sound as well. So this kid is obviously born to play September footy and he's he's building quite nicely. So I'll be very upset if I see Paddy Dangerfield just bursting through the front of stoppages early on in the piece. So I think if we can get Dunkley to do a job on him, uh, that goes halfway to getting us over the line. But yeah, Ashcroft and Lester are probably the two. And Archie on Stewart. Watch out for Archie on Stewart. Good one. I'm going to say Max Holmes got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. He uh, did his hamstring or had a bit of hamstring awareness in the same game two years ago and, and didn't get picked for the grand final, even though the docs declared him good to go. Uh, so he'll be very keen 
to book his spot on, on the last day in September. But uh, I think the one that name that most opposition fans don't give a lot of um, credit to or, or notice much of is because he doesn't get a stack of it, is Brad Close. You know, I think the guy in the long sleeves, for any Brisbane fans that maybe who's Brad Close, um, look for the bloke in the long sleeves, even if it's 30 degrees. Um, he He's the one player that if he's on, if he's um, getting involved and um, if he's because because he just doesn't waste he just doesn't waste a possession mate he just does not um, and I know every time I see him just absolutely firing um, he's a bit like he's not as damaging as Cyril Rioli but uh, his possessions uh, pretty much lead to scores every time so um, he is one if if he's not getting involved or if he's if, if the oppo- if the Brisbane Lions players crack down on him um, I think that'll go a long way to the Lions winning but I would keep a very very close eye on Brad Close don't respect that don't disrespect that man because um, he will cut you to ribbons if you do um just as we round out what's your favorite if you can remember if you can go back a little while what's your favorite cats versus lions game over the years i mean this is an obvious one isn't it <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know it might be different for me it, it probably will be for me <laughs> i mean there's 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 two that stand out um but i number one has to be miracle on grass ash mcgrath after the siren 2013 round 13 like easy what what was Oren Stevenson doing playing on I don't know but thank god he did um and I think it was 2019 second to last home and away game um and it was like a top two battle at that stage it was us versus you and McCarthy took the the hanger in in the goal square and he's in his 50th game against his old side uh, which was an absolutely epic game as well so I know obviously you're going to look at those two games very, very differently. But uh, for Lions fans, those two are are right up there. Um, oh, I couldn't believe that the Ash McGrath, he, was it 250th or 200th game? It was a milestone yeah, game. Yeah. And then Link McCartney in his milestone game as well. Oh, you're kidding me, aren't you? Uh, now, look, for me, it's a, it's a, it's a one out, out of left field a little bit. It's all the way back to 2004. No, it's not the prelim. Uh, it's, a, it's, a day, it's a wet, soggy day, a cold day at Cadinia Park. Uh, where the Cats were a very young Cats side against a very dominant Brisbane team for the last four or five years, um, and the Cats got over the top of the lines, and I was drenched. I'd had a couple of beers that day too, and I was absolutely drenched, and I was so proud of these boys because I'd, I'd really got involved in footy um, at the turn of the millennium in 2000, yep. and uh, it was just followed them through those really, really tough years, and they're still on We've had a couple of good years since then, but um, but That's yeah, follow, I basically started following the cats um, every week, uh, all through the week, reading every news article, and that game was just like, oh yeah, we've we've taken out the kings, um, and then you know, they got us, you got us um, a few weeks later um, at the MCG, um, yeah, for our home game, <laughs> your home game, yeah. Well, we know we know about that at Geelong. We don't get to play yeah. home games in finals, but we won't go there. Was that the same day that uh, Ackermanis? Kick those ridiculous goals and hit you uh, with that one. I don't know if it was that one. It was another yeah. wet one. We've played a couple of wet ones against the Lions. Yep. It could have been, but uh, I remember Ken Hinckley taking marks in the fourth quarter and um, Ken Hinckley, um, Kent Kingsley, sorry. Yeah. Ken Kingsley's on my brain at the moment. Um, <laughs> Ken Kingsley, uh, former number 18 spearhead at the Cats uh, back in the day. Sorry for any young listeners. It was, who the hell is that? Uh, all right, last what question. Last question. If the Lions can't win it this year, who do you want to win it? Uh, it has to be Sydney. Really? I can't really? can't stand Port Adelaide. Um, you guys have had success recent enough. Uh, I think Sydney has been the best team all year. And, you know, I love watching Golden and Warner and Haywood. Um, happily not so much, but... Um, you know, Nick Blakey, they're fun to watch when they're up and up and about. And Heaney is just basically the complete AFL player. So, uh, much like I have a huge amount of respect for Geelong, I have that same respect for Sydney. And you know, they've been starved of success for a bit over 10 years now. So, I think, you know, they've been the best team all year. They probably deserve to win, but um, hopefully we can get in the way. Me, uh, you'll like this answer. I'm going to say, if, if we can't beat you, I hope you go all the way. I hope Brisbane takes out the premiership in 2024. I'd like to see them. It's been 20 years since you won the last one. I don't, I don't definitely don't want Port Adelaide to win it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm over Port Adelaide in a big way. Uh, just the amount of arrogance that comes out of that club, considering they've done nothing. Um, I mean, the one premiership, yeah, clearly, but. Um, but no, I'm more than happy for, for you guys to win it. I think it would be redemption for last year. 
very unlucky with some decisions that didn't go your way and some absolute miracle goals from steel side bottom. Sorry if that tr- triggers you a little bit, but that bloody 60 meter goal from steel side, I couldn't believe it after yeah. the 15 meter penalty. But anyway, but it's your turn. It's 100% your turn. You've come, no, everybody wrote you off, me included, uh, after the first month of footy. Uh, no one gave you a chance. And uh, here you are after all those injuries, absolutely decimated with ACLs. And here you are, uh, one game away from another grand final. And if, you, if we can't beat you, seriously, I hope you go all the way and, and uh, your fans deserve it. Um, it's great for Queensland footy. It's great for the AFL. Um, Sydney, yeah, they've won it a few times. They've won it 10 years ago. They're, they're always going to be up there. They'll have another chance. But I reckon this is the last chance for the Brisbane Lions to get it done, uh, or possibly close to it anyway, because um, that yeah. window will shut pretty quickly. Um, well, it does for most clubs anyway. I don't know about Geelong. But it does. <laughs> that <laughs> window right. is painted open. <laughs> <laughs> mate really appreciate you coming on it's been a fun chat i hope we do it again um yeah uh make sure you check out everyone make if you're listening watching make sure you check out brisbane lions fan cast on youtube and i'm sure you're on um uh, uh, podcast as well is that correct yeah spotify apple all over the place so if you just uh look up brisbane lions fan cast we should pop up lovely lovely love it all right go cats go lions hope it's a great game uh thanks again we'll see you in the next one take care thanks, everyone mate. appreciate it